How's it going YouTube? This is Gaming with GeForce and today I am bringing you a updated version of my breeding tutorial. If you've seen my breeding tutorial video you'll notice that the video is very small and I pretty much left some details out. I want to be a lot more descriptive this time and get all the little details in so that's what I'm gonna do for you guys today and as you can see I'm standing here on Route 7 right in front of the Pokemon daycare not a better place to be for a video like this so anyway let's get into some basics um, to breed you need to have a female and a male Pokemon of the same type of species that does not mean that they have to be the same exact Pokemon like a male and a female Caterpie that just means they have to be in the same egg group there are different egg, egg groups and there's not really a way to tell what egg group they're in unless you look online you can find lists and it tells you what egg groups they're in but today uh, I have some Pokemon picked out that are gonna be used in the example for this video and I'll let you see what I got here so we're gonna be using this Carnivine here which is Kalos born and it has six IVs I hatched this yesterday and it also has uh, a jolly nature so you'll notice that he's holding well she is holding an everstone what the everstone does is it 100 percent guarantees that the nature gets passed down to the child so if you want to keep what nature your pokemon has it needs to be holding an everstone if this is not the pokemon that you want to keep the nature on and it's the other one like the ditto for example you would put the Everstone on the Ditto. So let's take a look at Ditto here. The Ditto is also Jolly, which we're not really concerned with that right now because I've already gotten the nature I want. I just want to keep the nature the same. That's why the Carnivine's holding the Everstone. So the Ditto is holding a Destiny Knot. This is also a 6 IV Pokemon. So what the Destiny Knot does is it increases the chances of passing the IVs down to the child so it's not a 100 percent guarantee that I'm gonna get I'm gonna hatch a 6 IV egg but the chances are definitely way higher I think it's something like 12 percent for 6 IVs I'm not entirely sure but I know you'll get a lot of 5 IV Pokemon and that's just completely okay with me I don't have to have 6 IVs and a lot of times people don't like 6 IVs because the IV spread needs to be different for different types of hidden power. When you use the move hidden power, it actually depends on what your IV spread is. So if you have a 6 IV Pokemon with, you know, 31 perfect values in each stat, the I'm pretty sure the hidden power type is always going to be dark. So if you don't want that, I don't generally use uh, hidden power, but if you don't want that, then make sure your IV spread is what you would like it to be. Um, okay, so keep in mind that they have to be holding these two items for this to work correctly. Now, in the first slot of your party, you're going to want a Pokemon that has either the Flame Body ability or the Magma Armor ability, which you can check this in the summary. My Talon Flame has Flame Body, if you look on the left panel. Now, another Pokemon that I know off the top of my head that you can use for this is uh, Slugma which I don't really like using Slugma because sometimes I need to fly places and I just equip the fly move on Talonflame this is not by any means a battling Talonflame or a story adventure Talonflame I just use it for breeding it's just strictly for breeding so anyway let's go ahead and uh, go over some basics here when you're breeding Pokemon there are a lot of things that determine whether or not an egg will appear if you're breeding the same species with different trainer ID numbers the chance of getting an egg is about 70 percent and the daycare man will tell you that the two seem to get along very well when you talk to him if you're breeding Pokemon that are the same species with the same trainer ID numbers the chance of getting an egg is about 50 percent and the daycare man will tell you that the two seem to get along when you talk to him if you're breeding a po if you're breeding Pokemon that are a different species with different trainer ID numbers, which means they're just completely different, like two different types of Pokemon from two different trainers, 
the chance of getting an egg is still about 50%, and the daycare man will tell you that the two seem to get along when you talk to him. If you're breeding Pokemon that are a different species with the same trainer ID numbers, the chance of getting an egg is only about 20%, and the daycare man will tell you that the two don't seem to like each other when you talk to him. Now, if you're trying to breed something that are in two entirely different egg groups, like a Pokemon from the water egg group and a Pokemon from the field egg group, uh, they're, that's just not going to work. They're incompatible with one another, and the chance of getting an egg is 0%, and the daycare man will tell you that the two prefer to play with other Pokemon more than with each other when you talk to him. So now that we've covered that, there are some other things you can do to make breeding a lot easier. If you focus on filling up your Kalos Pokedex, which means like the the central, the coastal, and the mountain Pokedex, if you fill those up, you can talk to the professor and get the Oval Charm, which I actually have that here. You'll be able to see it. And the Oval Charm is an Oval Charm said to increase the chance of Pokemon eggs being found at the daycare. So basically it just increases the amount of eggs you get from the daycare if you have two Pokemon in there. It makes it a little faster and a little easier. And there's also some other tricks I'll show you along the way. So let's go ahead and begin this. We're going to talk to this lady and leave our Pokemon here. And you don't have to leave these in there in any specific order. You can put them in there however you need. Or want. So we're just going to put the Ditto and the Carnivine in there. And we're going to go outside. And we're going to talk to the daycare man real quick to make sure that there's not an egg present. Okay, so, since he was turned around that way, and he's not really supposed to give me an egg. Yeah, he pretty much, if he's turned around that way, that means that there's no egg present. But what will happen sometimes is you'll walk up and talk to him, even though he's facing that way. Let's say I walk around in circles here and take some steps. If an egg happens to appear he will not update unless you leave the screen so sometimes you may talk to him even though he's facing that way he will say he has an egg for you that's just a glitch from where the screen's not updating yeah see ah it's you we were raising your pokemon and my goodness we were so surprised your pokemon was holding an egg we don't know how it got there but your pokemon had it you do want it don't you so i'm gonna take this egg from him anyway just so you know, you can check sometimes if you're on the same screen. Okay, so I'm going to ride my bike. And we're going to try to gather some eggs from him. That way we can uh, hatch them and check the IVs on them. So it's going to take a short moment to collect these. Okay, he's got another one for us. Once I get five eggs, we'll go to uh, the judge. I'll show you where that is. And he'll be able to check the IVs of the Pokemon for you. Yeah, so when he's facing outward toward the road, that means he has an egg for you. So make sure you talk to him when he's facing out like that. Another thing is, uh, along with the having the Talon Flame in your party to half the steps, you can also use the Hatching O Power, which I do not have right now because I'm going to make a tutorial on how to obtain that. That's why I have not gotten it yet because I need to save that for when I make my video. Okay, so we need one more egg. But yes, you can use the O power and it stacks with um, the flame body or the magma armor ability in the first slot. So just keep that in mind. You can hatch eggs really fast. Okay, so now I have my fifth egg. Now what we're going to do here is we are going to fly to Lumio City right in the center there.
And what we are going to do is go over to where the Pokemon Gym is, get on our bike, which in a minute here I'm going to show you a trick. I'm going to turn on my camera so you can see what I'm doing here. Pretty sure it will work if I turn it on. Okay. So the webcam is here. And what we're going to do is we're going to move it. So if I can move it here. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you my DS. And if you see the circle pad, you're going to want to get in the center lane here of Lumio City, which would be like right up in this area, and just get on your bike and you're gonna take one of these reward cards like the little things that get on your key rings you scan them at the store and get points and you're gonna slide it over to the left side of your thumbstick here and what that does is it holds the stick over so that you keep on going like this and this is a good way to hatch your eggs so you might hear a lot of people say to use a a dime or a nickel that is a bad idea and the reason I say that is is when you put something as big as a dime underneath of your um, circle pad it puts a lot of pressure on it and it's just not good for your thumbstick because it can actually wear it out so Don't do that. <laughs> so we'll just we'll wait for these eggs to hatch. They're just gonna basically. Um, the only thing I have to do is press the button to go through the text, but they'll hatch on their own. But anyway, yes. Do, don't put large objects under your circle pad unless you're ready to get ready to replace it because it will wear it out. I've seen a lot of people break their 3DSs doing this stuff and. The little uh, rewards cards, they're so thin and they're they are flexible, so they don't push a lot of pressure up from the circle pad, and that is a good thing. And it still works. You can see it working right now. So we're just going to... Uh, Keep on waiting and waiting for these to hatch. I know it takes a minute for Carnivine. He's not a very fast hatcher. You can also put two Pokemon into daycare that you want to level up. As long as they don't have, like, you know, certain moves you don't want to lose. And you can basically plug your DS in on the charger, and while you go to sleep, you can level your Pokemon up by doing this because nothing will get in your way. Just keep riding around the, the Prism Tower. You can let your DS do this all night while you take a nap. And then you'll wake up and have, uh, should have level 100 Pokemon into daycare. Okay, so we have one carnivine. These should hatch fairly quickly now, since I've already done the first one.
and we have another one don't want to give it a nickname Okay, so we have two more to hatch still, and then we will be done with that. Okay, so we have hatched all of our carnivine. I'm going to remove this thing from the thumb pad here. And then we are going to fly to Killood City, which this city will not be unlocked unless you've beaten the Elite Four and gotten the pass from the Professor, Professor Sycamore. So keep that in mind. If you haven't beaten the game yet, you do get the opportunity to breed, but not like you should be able to. Okay, so let's take these guys. This guy right here is the IV judge. They will tell you all about the individual values of your Pokemon. So it says he has outstanding potential overall. Greatest potential lies in HP, attack, defense, special defense, and speed. So this one is missing special attack. And how I know that they're 31 in all the other stats is because he says stats like those, they simply can't be beat. If he says that, then they have perfect values in the stats that he mentions. So let's go ahead and go to the PC. And I will show you. If you go to Organize Boxes and click on that first Pokemon that you just checked you will see a thing that says marking what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark the IVs this lets other people and ourselves know what the IVs are on the Pokemon and please do not abuse this don't just go marking IVs if you haven't checked them and say oh, okay I got a 5 IV Pokemon I want to trade for a legendary that's not cool there's a lot of people that do that and that's that's not very fun for the person that receives the Pokemon so let me show you how these markers work and this Pokemon is missing special attack so the first one here on the left is going to be HP we're going to mark that over to the right is going to be attack the next one down over to the left is going to be defense and this one over here will be special attack which we're not marking because that was not mentioned and this one down here on the bottom left is special defense and lastly speed and then you hit the confirm button and that's how you mark your Pokemon so if you look over on the left panel now you'll see that the shapes are blackened in except for the heart that means that this Pokemon does not have 31 IVs or individual values which is what that stands for in special attack so if you're planning on using Carnivine for a special attacker this would be a no-go for competitive 
So let's go ahead and check the other ones real quick since I covered the basics on how to mark these things. And we'll see what we got here. So the first one was off the bat, the 5 IV. Outstanding potential, HP, attack, special attack, special defense, and speed. So this one is missing defense. So we're going to go back to the PC and we're going to mark this really quick. And again, I'm going to... HP attack we're not gonna mark defense special attack special defense speed so now we got two 5 IV Pokemon already from the first batch so let's go check the third one and he's gonna say outstanding potential overall HP attack defense special attack special defense and he's missing speed Stats like those, they simply can't be beat. Okay, so this one's missing speed. And that would be the third one. HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense. And we have two more to check here. Another thing that I want to mention is that another thing that gets transferred with the Pokemon in breeding is the Pokeball that the parents in. If you breed a Pokemon that is in like an Ultra Ball, then the baby will also be in an Ultra Ball. So this one's missing speed as well. And the Pokeball thing does not work with like Cherish Balls and the Master Ball so just forget about trying that it's not gonna work I just want to give you a heads up before you waste your time but any other Pokeball like even the Pokeballs from like the Johto region like the Moon Ball and such uh, all of those will transfer if you have Pokemon that are caught in those balls so it's kinda cool if you're uh, a fan of what kind of Pokeball the babies are sitting in. Okay, so this one has HP, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed. So it's missing attack. And that is not a good thing for Carnivine. He has a lot of physical moves. HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed. So we're not marking attack. Okay, so that's how you breed for and check IVs in Pokemon X and Y. In case you do not know how to do this, that shows you right there. And there's a few other things I want to cover. They're not real big deals, but um, there's also some Pokemon that can only produce the correct egg if you're having the mother hold a specific item, like Azuril. You have to have a Meryl or a Zumeril holding a Sea Incense. Bonsley has to be a Rock Incense on Suda Wudo. Uh, Budu would be a Rose Incense on Roselia or Roserade. Chingling would be a Pure Incense on Chimeco. Happiny would be the Luck Incense on Chansey or Blissey. Mantike is the wave incense on Mantine. Mime Jr. is the odd incense on Mr. Mime. Munchlax is the full incense on Snorlax. And Why Not is the lax incense on Wobbuffet. So those are how you get the baby Pokemon. If you're breeding Snorlax and it's just popping out Snorlax eggs, that's why because you have to have that full incense on there for it to produce a Munchlax. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of little things that determine what the baby's gonna be. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the daycare. Which is Camp for your town. And you just go left over to Route 7. It's really quick to get there.
there's one more thing I want to cover before I conclude this video and it's actually going to require me to take my Pokemon out okay so we're just going to take um, both of these out oh wait I have no room for these actually okay actually I have a Pokemon in my box I can use for this I just have to find it okay all these dittos here if you look at um, we're gonna go to the summary if you look at ditto summary in the top left corner on the left panel you'll see it says KOR now that thing up there it's the region that this ditto is from it's from Korea and that is a different region than what I am in I am in the USA and I'm breeding Korean Pokemon with American Pokemon what this is called is the Masuda method this is nothing new this is this has been uh, present in past generations but what the Masuda method does is if you breed two Pokemon from two different regions it increases the chance of hatching a shiny Pokemon so just so you know that I don't know um, how many people are aware of this there's a lot of people hatching eggs that I do know are trying to get shinies and stuff I've gotten a few shinies by doing this I've gotten a hone edge on the 16th egg I've gotten a chikorita on around like the 46th or 47th egg and one time I just I bred a whole bunch of piplups and there was a box of eggs that I just hadn't got around to hatching and on the last egg I hatched it was actually a shiny so I've gotten like three or four shinies doing this if I left any out I don't remember exactly which ones they were um, but yeah that that's the last thing I want to cover so I hope this video was informative to you if it was please leave me a like and subscribe to my channel it helps me out a lot and just want to say have a great day this has been gaming with GeForce and I hope this helps you out a lot. Thanks for watching.